so you know I'm in the middle of making this weird creature right now and he's you know kind of a weird creature like I say with a bunch of crazy hands and uh, no face but sort of it's gonna be this giant clamshell type configuration um, just to talk about though some like approach and, and the process that I'm, I'm using and I use a lot uh, it started pretty much from like a sphere and you can do this now in ZBrush which is really cool um, I feel like you can get a little more polys out of this because it uses GPU or, or I really don't know why but you can crank up the polys and then you know I start blocking more of the f freaking creature <laughs> until um, you know there's no more of this block you know left that you can cut things out and I often switch between cutting into things and make a creature and uh, just pulling things out and having it be more like freeform you know clay versus carving but carving is not to be discarded it's actually pretty damn cool uh, you know so you can see it taking shape um, you know there's curves there are different ways to pop you know holes in the surface um, and just get rid of those web points um, but yeah, it, uh, you know, sometimes allows you to kind of just sketch instead of manipulate, you know, you kind of brush instead of manipulate, which I, I like, you know, I don't like nudging a lot. I'm not a huge nudge fan. Um, but yeah, with these new, you know, local subdivision stuff that you're seeing, like in Sculptures Pro and ZBrush and, and what's in 3D Coat, it is nice to do things at different scales, you know, like I did those fingertips way, you know, uh, turn this shit off, um, get out of here, okay, the, uh, di you know, ability to do things at, at different scales is really nice, because if I was dynameshing, it's always like low res, uh, in a way, you know, it's like, the whole thing is covered with a uniform layer of glue and this you kind of can pull things out from the muck in, in ways that you actually you really I tried doing this dynameshing and it's really doesn't work that well but um, just the way I like to work you know and but again this is not carved it's it, you know like I just threw this like curve in there and later it becomes like a hand now is this design fantastic? I don't know. I did sketch something out, but uh, it's always fun to make a lot of detailed, you know, noodly stuff like this. Um, you know, I start using like uh, kind of a needlepoint brush to do build a lot of these forms. But, um, you know, similar to, you know, clay buildup in, in Zebra, or sorry, uh, Dam Standard. Um, and I, I like to, when things are early, um, just kind of angulize them. It's not a word, but, you know, you want to show yourself where the forms are. You, you know, you think you know where they are, but it, it's nice to kind of make them more obvious and um, you know I have different uh, tools to fucking help me with that if I can find them um, you know some divide more than others uh, ZBrush you have a little more control over how much dividing is happening I mean here you can crank it up a bit but um, 
not uh, maybe not as much. Although, you know, you can see them at nearly seven million polygons, and uh, I get trouble doing that with Sculptures Pro right now. Maybe my machine sucks. You know, it could be. Um, I, I'm redoing the the hands on this guy. But yeah, in general, you know, the process that I'm using, you know, uh, has me, you know, if I make a new layer, kind of, you know, building a shape, and then um, using brushes that are a little bit like polish polish like H polish or whatever and um, you know you there's move I like to have a bit of a, a needle point on my on my move and um, you know I'm defining you know kind of as if these were the intersections of, of the forms and you know I'm not really sculpting anything in particular at the moment but you know you wanna in this program hit hit them angles first and then you can kinda like subdivide it down. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about primary shapes, secondary shapes. Um, that's essentially, you know, the approach. And, and it's almost as if you're sculpting things as if they were Boolean, you know, if you had a one shape intersecting with the other, there's kind of a plane um, discontinuity I guess you could call it like like that and you know then you can interpret it more organically with essentially a clay build-up style brush and um, you know there's kind of a snake type brush for pulling things out I tend to do a bit more using what's called curves, which are like this tool that I started with. Um, but, uh, you know, multiple ways to skin a cat, multiple ways to sculpt a creature. You know, and I, there's different like sort of versions of this needle brush which has become like my favorite favorite thing um, it's a damn standard ripoff <laughs> essentially but it just has a pointed alpha you can see it's like damn standard and um, not only are you making lines but you know you can kind of sketch out the surface because you don't always know which way you want to go with things and this sketching is a good way to find out you know and just using that in conjunction with this kind of polished like brush here and there's a you know different kind of clay brush this one reminds me of just the straight up clay brush and Z brush um, But yeah, you know, you can just, um, what I like about hitting these angles is it allows you to kind of think abstractly about the form before anatomically, which helps because you, you can't really get the clean shapes that you want if you go straight to an anatomical accuracy. It cats me out. He's quiet down. Um, 
so yeah, you know, is this the greatest arm I've ever sculpted? Probably not, but, um, just, uh, all these things kind of synergize together, these different tools, and I always like to just interpret, like, this is an abstract, um, thing to, you know, make these, these plane breaks that do correlate with actual anatomy, you know, it, it I, I mean, you sort of actually know your anatomy, which will help you, you know, see these, um, simple planes that, uh, can be used to interpret the surface. But, you know, that's in general kind of the approach that I, I use. And, you know, there's a time to use like this more sketchy brush. Um, it has a quicker, you know, it's based off this draw tool. And then there, these are all based off of these so-called live clay tools. You know, I don't know how it's named all that well, but they divide and smooth and push and pull. Um, I always mess with the depth, the depth. and um, pinch, you know, so you don't get this super soft kind of thing. There, there's a time to pinch for sure. Once, you know, that didn't really come in so early, but um, you'll see more opportunity, you know, once these these forms start coming together, you're going to want more pinch because um, you know, don't want it to be so soft and you know, certainly pinching is one way to go and I, I'll just switch back and forth you know, you're just trying to see stuff um, some creaturey kind of forms, you know, but so far it's all softy and uh, don't have to keep it that way. You can come in and, and pinch your way towards some harder angles. It, it does really help to think like this thing is almost booleaned with something else. It's just you're drawing it on the fly rather than going and, and bullying different shapes you know, through combining and whatnot. Um, you know, once you have those hard uh, intersections, you're starting to get away from the softness that, that can happen. Because um, the softness is cool, but you know, it used to be a problem to making things smooth was like an issue. I feel like early early on in, in a lot of these digital sculpting tools, um, actually in all sculpture, it's it's kind of I always find it a pain in the ass to make things as smooth as what my friends always seem to be able to do. Um, but yeah, you can kind of just sculpt along, uh, sorry, sketch along. You know, when you see a crease, kind of hit that crease up. zoom the hell out, never get stuck like this all the time, but you kind of have to in this medium, but then just jump back like you just got burnt or something, because it's, it's really important to do. Um, but yeah, you just see opportunities to spell out the forms more with what I call shelving because it's almost like, you know, shelves or, and I'm sure I didn't invent that. Um, I probably heard it somewhere and now I call it shelving. But, um, 
yeah, it, it just helps you see what the hell you're doing, you know? You, otherwise, you have a soft thing, and it's not cool. And uh, it's hard to read. So, like, even the... Like, this is all... It's an abstract exercise to make, like, different shelves out of organic shapes. And, of course, you don't want to leave it that way, because everybody complains if you do. Um, unless that's what they want, but... Yeah, you know. Also, I like to move with a bit of an angle brush, like I said, because I feel like it just gives a cleaner move rather than like you're liquefying or something. Just, you know, a little hard to explain that one, but uh, it just brings the shapes to where I want them somehow in a more reliable way. Don't always do it, but uh, I do it enough to mention it here. Um, so, like say, you know, this is kind of a tail, right? There's different ways to blow this webbing away. Um, I like this, you know, it's essentially called rapid brush, but I, it's kind of, if you look up 3D Coat H Polish or Polish Brushes, you kind of find this one, and then I tweak the depth to, to be higher, and then I inverted the function of the tool. Um, you know, you, you can do that and smooth. I mean, it's a little bit of iteration. Uh, but when it's time to really cut a hole, you know, I often use the Curves tool. And, and blow away uh, much of it using that, but it's a little early to do it on that area. I like to keep it connected as long as I can. You know, and keep finding these monster uh, shapes. I guess all shapes are monster shapes on this guy, but, you know, just, you know, you don't want something boring and, and uh, too, too much like normal anatomy, so you can make up these kind of forms. Really sure where I get that from, but so yeah, that's that's sort of the approach, you know, some tools that I use. Uh, you know, as this thing is more finished, I'll show more. This hand's got to go. I didn't, you know, this is kind of stupid, but um, you know trying to get all the compression and stuff you can do different style you know folds and whatnot using pinch um, but yeah that it's more or less kind of the way I mean it's it's I think useful to think about these um, plain, you know, surface uh, directional change-ups, you know, as, as different pieces come together. It's like if you imagine there was like a block here and then like a circle here, they'd come together sort of like that. So don't imagine it or imagine it, whatever. It's it's 
helps me, you know, get a cleaner thing. So, there you go. That's all I got for now. Let's, I'll, I'll keep making this thing. Hopefully it'll get done.